Hey chatters, back here to talk to you about Markdown. This might be one of the more boring presentations I ever give you, but super important. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on a tool for note taking and building your second brain called Obsidian. And an essential part of Obsidian is Markdown. So if you don't know about it, you don't know how to use it, I'm just going to be setting you up for failure. But there's another important aspect to Markdown, which is that I also write my prompts in Markdown now. So I think it's important for you to understand overall. Take with this what you will. I hope it's helpful. But I feel like Markdown is probably one of the better investments you can make right now in terms of learning a way to write. It is very straightforward and easy and has a lot of benefits, which we'll get into in a minute. Let's start off with what the heck is Markdown. So technically, it's a lightweight markup language with plain text formatting syntax. All you need to know about that is, let's say you're in a Google Doc or a Word Doc or whatever, and you bold something, you italicize something, you create a heading for something. You're seeing that a specific way, right? Where the letters get fatter when you bold something. But the way the computer sees it is not like that. It's more like here's the symbols that you enclose something in so that it's telling me as the computer to visualize it in this specific way or tag it in this specific way. That's all you got to understand is this is what's happening behind the scenes. And you've probably seen this in when you've done things in ChatGPT. You probably had this annoying moment where you're like, oh, this is so nicely formatted. Let me copy and paste this into another document. And someone's like, what are all these like hashtags and asterisks doing here? That's what Markdown is. We're going to teach you the basics. And really the three things you need to know is how to do headings and paragraphs, bold and italics, and lists to start. We'll do more. We're going to go over sort of everything. But there's just these few simple symbols, which if you forget everything else, just remember these ones. For those of you who don't know what headings are, I'm so sorry for you. Headings are very important in terms of structuring your document, and they're tiered so that it's hierarchical, right? So you have your heading one, which is going to be the biggest, and then heading twos maybe for subtopics, and maybe even heading threes within each of those for further subtopics and beyond. They play a crucial role in structuring your content, especially if it's something longer. It just allows you to go to that navigation bar and just click through quickly based on the headings to get to where you want in the document. And just generally, you can link across headings too. So it just makes it easier to connect things throughout a document as well. It's super simple. is just the hashtag symbol and space. And then you just add an additional hashtag for each heading level you want to go below. So heading two would be hashtag, hashtag, space, whatever, so on and so forth. Super simple. Next, we have lists. And there's three different ways to create lists in Markdown. The first is numbers, easy breezy. You just do number one, period, space, and then it formats. You've probably done this in your Word docs. Similarly, with bullets, all you got to do is like a hyphen space and it'll create a bulleted list. And maybe the less known one is this checkbox. The way a checkbox looks in Markdown is typically how you would do a list, but then you add the square brackets with a space in between. Hyphen, square bracket, space, square bracket. And that'll turn into a nice little checklist for you. Next is embedding. This is one that I had fun with early on for ChatGPT. But these are just how you create hyperlinks and attach images in a markdown format. For hyperlinks, so for example, if you wanted it to say, go to Synaptic Labs and you want that Synaptic Labs to be a hyperlink, you would put those words Synaptic Labs in the square brackets. And then after that, in just your normal parentheses, you put the full URL. And this will turn into a hyperlink. Next, we have images, pretty much the same exact format as a link, but you put the exclamation mark first. Next, we have bold, italics, and strike through. Bold, you all know already, but that's just two asterisks around the word that you're trying to bold. 
Italics is just one asterisk around the word you're trying to, or words so you're trying to italicize. And strike through, that's just when it like strikes through the word that you're on. This one's a little weird, but it's those squiggly lines, just two of them on each side. It's like the top left of your keyboard. I don't know how much you'll actually use those, but just so you know. So those are the ones you're going to mostly be using. You're not really going to be using the other ones as much, but here they are, just in case I'll go through them quickly. One is code blocks. You might have seen that in ChatGPT, where it has this weird block of text that you can do a copy on. That's just one back tick for a single line or three back ticks for a multi line of code just enclosed. And similarly, the back tick, that's exactly where that squiggly line is in the top left of your keyboard as well. Next is just dividing content sections. Again, not super important, but just three hyphens or three stars or three underlines and enter, and it'll create a nice little divider for you. At least in the near term, before I get into Obsidian stuff, I just want to mention that I exclusively now prompt in Markdown. And I do this because if you think about it, this is what ChatGPT has been mostly trained on. It's going to be like a ton of free stuff all across the internet, lots of random blogs and stuff. And they're all going to be formatted like this because this is how we've been formatting things forever now for SEO and, and everything. So it's going to intuitively understand this language and allow you a little bit more control in terms of bringing attention to certain areas of the prompt so that it's going to be a little bit more stable in the implementation. So the only ones you're really going to use for these are the headings again. And even that, I, I usually only use heading one. Numbers and lists, bolding or italicizing things, and just generally using this to format your outputs. Let's just briefly take the professor as an example. I usually separate things into a mission section, which is the role, the job, the some of the context, what I want it to do. Synapse CR, you see it's bolded, but I have the asterisks around it. Instructions, again, this is its own heading. We have a numbered list and then a sub list. Commands, another one here rules. See GitHub, it looks like it's a hyperlink, but if I actually look at it, you see it has the brackets and the parentheses. And then here too for Synaptic Labs, you'll see I have it hyperlinked. That's really all you need to know. I just think about it in terms of mostly using these headings to separate into sections. It's just easier for you to both edit. And again, no research backing this at this point, but I have an intuition that they're going to follow markdown format a lot better. The last thing I want to leave you with, I don't know if this will sell you, but Markdown is super portable. It just means it's future proof. No matter what happens ever, more or less, computers are still going to look at language in Markdown and express it in Markdown. So just something to think about. It's going to be, I want to sell you on Obsidian, but there's a learning curve. And so I just want you to understand that if you put in the time, it's going to pay off the dividends, as I hope to show you. Thanks for listening, chatters. I hope you enjoyed learning about Markdown and get excited to start getting to Obsidian soon.